Guys, today full guide on Clorinde, where I talk about her kit, builds, teams, power level, and so on. First of all, she's an Electro main DPS, which means she competes with characters like Raiden, Keqing, Sino, all pretty good, but certainly not unbeatable. Her kit kind of follows the route Arlecchino has traced before her, because it focuses a lot on Bond of Life. Yeah, Mihoyo had a late stage enlightenment with this mechanic in Fontaine, I guess. Having said this, I must say she would probably be one of the funniest and most dynamic characters to play in the game. It all starts from her elemental skill. She's normally a sword character, but when she uses her skill, she picks up her pistol instead. This pistol will be the main source of her normal attacks, and these normal attacks, other than dealing damage, will also build 35% bond of life each. This until the total bond of life crosses 100%. After that, she will stop getting it. During the duration of these special effects, Clorinth can't be healed by other characters on the team, which is obvious because otherwise the bond of life she has will be removed. What follows is her second elemental skill, which is a sword thrust that will pierce through opponents, consume all the bond of life she has and deal damage accordingly, and also heal her. Her skill deals maximum damage only when you have over 100% bond of life. And very important here, it also has no cooldown. So what you should do is use normal attacks to build up bond of life, and then unleash the elemental skill to do a lot of damage in a single instance. All of this in loop until her uptime of 7 seconds and a half ends. And this, the Duration has been a matter of controversy for Clorinde, because late in beta, the duration of her elemental skill stance got nerfed from 9 seconds to 7 seconds and a half. Meanwhile, the cooldown of this skill is of 16 seconds, so her uptime is quite low compared to her downtime. This change single-handedly made people reconsider how they should play Clorinde, because as a baseline, it kind of restricts her to short rotations themes. But this is all team talk, so for now, let's keep going with the kit. A thing that I think is getting kind of overlooked for Clorinde is that she can heal herself. I honestly believe she would be one of the best self-sustain units in the whole game. That's because, again, every elemental skill she will heal by a certain percentage of her bond of life. Since this skill is pretty frequent in her rotations, every second and a half, give or take, she will be able to heal continuously during her windows. This is different from Arlecchino, that can only heal at the end of her rotations through her elemental burst, which is something that makes her vulnerable to get killed before that. Also, her being able to heal throughout the rotation makes her synergize with Furina, which is something Arlecchino doesn't have by herself. So just keep in mind that while there might be some questions regarding her offense, her defensive utility is pretty great. Her elemental burst is also very integral to her rotations, because it does a lot of damage and it also gives her 120% bond of life. So it should commonly be used to start the rotation, because that way you can get bond of life to use the elemental skill right after and start very strong. Overall, it's pretty important, and it just makes her a character where you don't want to skip the burst in a rotation, it, it's just a big loss. Talent priority will be elemental skill first, and then elemental burst. Skill first, because her attacks during her special stance all scale off the elemental skill talent level. Consequently, this means that leveling up her normal attack talent level is useless. Let me remind you that if you enjoy my content but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really makes me notice your support, and also go check the new Wuthering Waves channel I've opened. In terms of teams, as a baseline, Corinne doesn't have particular restrictions. Her Ascension 1 passive considerably increases her multipliers if any character on the team triggers an electro reaction. This can stack up to 3 times, and note that it doesn't have to be different reactions, it can even be the same reaction 3 times. This means that the only teams where she can't be played in are the mono electro teams with 4 electro characters, where you obviously aren't triggering any reaction. On the flip side, her short elemental skill uptime of 7 seconds and a half means trouble, because it technically restricts her to teams that want to play on short rotations. So, teams that can perfectly match her elemental skill cooldown to play around the fact that she can't be on field for very long in a single instance. This cooldown again is of 16 seconds, and this makes all those characters with longer cooldowns like uh, Shan Ling, Sarah, all kind of unpractical with Corinne. The good side of this is that while the windows are short, her damage per second is rather high, so it's not like it's an Ayato situation where the windows are short and the damage is low, luckily. Ayato means I'm sorry. Anyway, since her damage is pretty good, it incentivizes to use teams that play around her cooldowns. 
it helps that a lot of the strong off-field characters like uh, Kazua, Nahida, Bennett, Fischl can work on short rotations. Specifically, there is Fischl that is actually a character that prefers to be played on short rotations because Odds only has a 12 seconds long uptime for her, so the quicker she can recast him, the better it is for her damage. Initially, I didn't want to calculate Bennett teams because Corinda's very high mobility during her elemental skill duration, so it might be hard for her to remain within Bennett's burst range for the entire of it. But Oyoverse has kind of whittled down the options she has with the nerf, so here we are. It's solid in theory, but just keep in mind it might be poor in practice. Chevreux's teams are also an option, and on these teams you will need a strong off-field pyro player to keep the overloads consistent for Clorin. Since Xiaoling was forcefully removed from the equation, the only option here is Toma. Toma's elemental burst, which is the source of his shield and off-field pyro damage, normally has a 20 seconds long cooldown, but his cost Generation 1 can decrease it to 17. This makes him a pretty good fit with Colorind, especially if you have his Constellation 6 that makes him able to give the active character a 15% normal attack damage bonus specifically that is pretty useful for Colorind. But La Creme de la Creme are Dendro teams. The reason Dendro teams are so good is simple. Fischl is the best partner for Chlorind, and Dendro teams are the best teams for Fischl. Now, it's not like Chlorind is getting carried here though, because she by herself is also pretty good here. The reason is that she attacks very quickly, which means she will be able to apply a lot of Electro, which means a lot of Aggravate triggers. Additionally, Dendro teams allow her to use the Thundering Fury set, which enables a whole other playstyle for her entirely. If her cooldowns are too long, then let's shorten them. Simple. And that's exactly what Thundering Fury does. On every aggravate proc from Chlorind, her elemental skill cooldown will be reduced by 1. While Thundering Fury technically works with every Electro reaction, it's only perfectly consistent on Dendro teams because it's the only scenario where the Electro character is guaranteed to be the trigger of his own reactions. For example, on the Overload Toma team I mentioned before, Toma would be the trigger of most of the Overload reactions on the team, so it wouldn't decrease the cooldown for Chlorind. Meanwhile, on Dendro teams it works perfectly, and that's really amazing for Chlorind, really. Practically, it's good enough that her elemental skill cooldown gets basically removed. This makes her able to play in rotations where she can use her elemental skill twice, and this can be better for the team. For example, 25 seconds long rotations where Fischl can recast odds even faster. These teams end up being better than the short rotation variants, even if in the latter Chlorine is using a higher damage artifact set. But more importantly, long rotations enable new teammates for Chlorine. Specifically, what I've looked at is a Furina Quick Bloom team. As I mentioned before, Chlorine being able to heal herself makes it a good fit with Furina, so here we are. For the composition I calculated, there is no team wide healer, but you can do things like giving Nahida the prototype Ember weapon, which makes her able to heal the whole team when she uses her burst. Overall, it sounds pretty decent in theory, and it should scale well with investment too, thanks to Furina's constellations. Potentially, on this team, you could replace Fischl with somebody like Baiju. In fact, while Chlorind can't be healed by other characters on the team during her special stance, she has this unique mechanic that makes that type of healing convert to Bond of Life for her instead. This means that if you use characters like Baiju on her teams, instead of heals, she will be receiving Bond of Life from them. Practically, this means that the buildups for her elemental skill become faster, and so she will be able to use more skills during her rotations. So the healer based teams could have a very good offensive potential, but I'm not calculating them yet because I'm not able to currently estimate how many more skills uh, Chlorine will be able to use in practice. It's just a theoretical thing for now that has good potential, but uh, as of now I'm not confident in calculating it. So overall, Chlorine might not be super flexible in terms of teams, like uh, compared to Raiden, but if you compare her to Keqing or Sino, she's definitely more versatile than them. And also, the damage output of her best teams looks above what we've seen from other Electro characters so far in the meta. However, the older Electro DPS are kind of outdated now, so it's definitely not that impressive, but if you consider that Chlorind also has some good defensive utility other than having great damage, then her overall value definitely ships up to be pretty interesting. Bits wise, for the stats, Chlorind likes attack, damage bonus and crit on most of her teams. Basically all the teams except the Quick Bloom ones where elemental mastery becomes better than attack. Also, regarding her crit build specifically, she gets a lot of crit rate for free. Her ascension stat gives crit rate, her passive gives her 20% crit rate, so she will start at around 50 50% crit rate, which is a lot. For this reason, most of the time she will want a crit damage circlet. 
Regarding the energy recharge, it's simple. If you use Fischl on team, she won't need any energy investment. If you don't, then she will need some. Of course, I'm assuming you want to burst every rotation, because her elemental burst is very important for her total damage output. Regarding her artifact set, something I haven't mentioned before is that all of her elemental skills count as normal attack damage. As a result, just like for Arlecchino, the Gladiator set is a very good choice for her. Of course, her best option in terms of pure damage is the Whimsy set, so the Bond of Life set, but the Gladiator set is a very good alternative. You also have Echoes that can be good, but kinda depends on paying for the activation of its effects. For the rest, again, Thundering Fury can actually be the best choice overall if you play her on the teams where this set is magnified. In this scenario it's better than the Whimsy set and these teams also happen to be the best teams for Chlorine overall, so the Thundering Fury set has a lot of value. Weapons wise, her signature is pretty great, it's basically a better misplitter in terms of stats since it provides a lot of damage bonus and also crit damage. Still, 5 star swords are quite amazing in Genshin, so you have options like Heron, misplitter again both being very good alternatives to the signature. Meanwhile, the cheaper options like the Black Sword, Lion's Roar, Finale of the Deep are all nice, playable, but much worse than the 5 star options comparatively. Also, remember that crit rate thing I mentioned before, Chlorine gets a lot of crit rate for free, so crit rate weapons are not very easy to manage on her. As for her constellations, it's a Fontaine character, so you know what is going to happen. Her first two constellations are very fucking strong, the constellation one adds extra damage instantly to her normal attacks, which can trigger reactions by themselves, so they can trigger extra aggravates on weakened teams. The Constellation 2 improves the effects of her first passive, which increases her damage, and also the good old interruption resistance buff. Of course there is. Corinne has no interruption resistance at Constellation 0, and of course this Constellation here fixes it, just like the Constellation once did for Arlecchino, Nuvillette before her, so the classic Hoyoverse move. Overall, Corinne will be good. I'd say. I don't think she will be a top meta, very strong DPS like Arlecchino, Nuvillette, but she should still be pretty nice. I don't like to make predictions like this, but I think she will be in the Brizzly Navia range, something like that. So a pretty good DPS with great defensive utility thanks to her healing. And with this, I'm done for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and also go check the Cito's guide I made a few days ago. Bye bye.